Hallelujah. May the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus' name. We thank God for this wonderful hour the Lord has given us. Praise the Lord. Um, let's take this song. I love the man of Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost to me. I love the man of Galilee. I say, I love the man. I love the man of Galilee, for he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost to me. I love the man of Galilee. I say I love the man, I love the man of Galilee, for he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost to me. I love the man. Of Galilee. Lord, we want to thank you for giving us this great opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, we bless you because we know your word will not fall to the ground. It must assuredly accomplish that which it had been sent for. My Father and my God, this hour we want to bless you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you because we know your word is forever settled. Be glorified and be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My Father and my God, we pray even as your word will comfort. Let everyone that hears your word this hour be blessed. Let your word have its way in every life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, La Kapashatala Mosotolo Proteke Mahanda. I pray that everyone will be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Be glorified and be exalted. Thank you for what you will do in our mix this hour. Be glorified and be lifted high. Hallelujah. Amen. I bless everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry for coming up late. Hallelujah. Today we are going to believe God for what we do in our life. I strongly believe Him that His word will be established in our lives in Jesus name let's open our Bibles to Genesis Genesis chapter 3 we open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3 Genesis chapter 3 and I want to read from verse 15 God bless you God bless you God bless you Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between her seed, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. God was saying to the serpent, He's going to put enmity between him and the woman, between her seed 
you are between Satan's seed and her seed. Hallelujah. Uh, God is saying that uh, he will bruise his head and um, he shall bruise his heel. Now, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 is giving us a great revelation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Genesis 3.15 is giving us a great revelation. From the day Adam and Eve, God bless you, from the day Adam and Eve sinned, that was the day God planned to redeem mankind. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, when he was talking to Satan, he says, he will make mankind enemy to Satan. And truly we are Satan's enemy. I want you to understand what happened in the garden. In the garden of Eden, Satan could be able to speak to man. That during those, that, those period, God gave us the ability to understand what, what, whatsoever any animal is talking about. You know, when they talk, woman can understand. And they can understand woman as well. So Satan came, Satan is a spirit, you must understand that, Satan is a spirit, God is also a spirit, but spirit uses bodies, human body, or body of any creature to operate in this physical world. Spirits have less to do without bodies, and the Bible said that Satan entered into a serpent, in the field and the serpent came to Satan as Satan entered into Peter was telling Jesus he's not going to die and Jesus said Satan I rebuke you so that is the same way Satan entered into the serpent and convinced Eve about the blessing about the fruit Hallelujah. Convince Eve about the fruit. And Eve ate the fruit and gave to the husband. Now, when Eve ate the fruit and gave it to the husband, something happened. God brought judgment on mankind. And one of the judgments God gave to Satan is that man will be in enmity with Satan and her seed. Anything that comes out from Satan. God will, the mankind will be in enmity with Satan, according to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Now, there is something I want to bring out here which I, many of you have not seen. He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. A woman does not have a seed. The seed, a, a woman does not have a seed, it is only a man. When we talk about seed, we are talking about life. But this is talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the seed of the woman. It was not the seed of the man. Black and shine. Call me later. God bless you. Flossy, black and shine. God bless you. Please, I want you to take your Bibles as I read. You agree with me. You look into the Bible so that we can be able to um, meet up. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, and uh, if you have any question to ask, you are free to type the question. If you have, you need to respond so that I will know that you are on the line. Hallelujah. Amen. That is um, one of the ways we can easily flow. Praise the Lord. So today I am reading from Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. The woman seed, that is what the Bible call it. Biologically speaking, women don't have a seed. It is the seed of the man. But because there is no man involved in the birth of Christ, that was why it was called the seed of the woman. Hallelujah. So in Genesis chapter 15, the, 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 the seed of the woman was Jesus Christ. She shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That issue happened at the cross. Now, today, we are going to focus our attention at the cross of Jesus Christ. What happened at the cross of Jesus Christ? A lot happened. But one of the things I want to tell you is the prophecy 
that God gave in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 that the woman's seed shall bruise thy head and you shall bruise his heel. Remember I have said it again, woman don't have a seed. It's only male that have seed. The seed is the sperm. But because there is no woman seed that was involved in the birth of Christ, that was why it was referred as the seed of the woman. Hallelujah. So um, with this portion of the scripture, uh, I want to let you know what transpired at the cross. At the cross of Calvary, they took Jesus to the cross and they nailed him with the thieves. Two thieves, one not at his left and the other at his right. And when they nailed him, remember, they, they, were, they had an option to release somebody and it was supposed to be Jesus they said no let them release a criminal a criminal was released and they said Jesus should be crucified now when Jesus Christ was taken to the to Golgotha the place of skull the truth about it is that he had no sin he did not commit sin but he decided to pay the price for I and you. Remember, he was called the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of man. Hallelujah. He was called the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of man. At the cross of Calvary, that was where victory was being won. At the cross of Calvary, that was where God brought judgment and delivered mankind at the cross of Calvary that was where the fate of Christianity started at the cross of Calvary so today we are going to look at the benefits of the cross what did the cross of the, the Jesus Christ going to the cross benefits us what are the benefits hallelujah what are the benefits so the first thing i want to let you know is the cross is a place of judgment that is the first thing i want to let you know the bible says for he became a cause for us for it is written cause is anyone that is being hanged on the tree Jesus Christ became a cause for us. Hallelujah. It is written, cause is anyone that is hanged on the tree. So in the Old Testament, the capital punishment, the capital punishment of every criminal is to hang them on the cross. That is the capital punishment. Like in Africa, the capital punishment of every criminal High, high criminals is to put them on the drone and shoot them. But in the time of the Roman Empire, their capital punishment was to hang them on the cross. And they would be on the cross. What would sustain them would be only nails. Nail is what will sustain them until they die. So Jesus Christ chooses to pass through this pain for me and you. Yeah, he chooses to pass through the pain. And the pain was being hanged on the cross. Remember, I want to show you something in uh, John chapter 3. Open your Bibles to John chapter 3. Let me show you something there in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And I read from verse 14. The Bible says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. The serpent was being lifted up. The serpent was the first creature that God caused. Remember, in Genesis, he caused the serpent. So anything that is being lifted up above the earth, in terms of being hanging on, on the hang that is being hanged, that thing is already cost. Hallelujah. So Jesus was saying 
in John chapter 3, verse 14, it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. 15. That whomsoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, I want to let you know this. Jesus Christ was the prototype, or the example of the serpent that was lifted up. God allowed Moses to use the serpent because serpent is the only thing that has been caused. So it's to tell you what is about to happen to Jesus Christ. As I said before, the Bible says, cause is every man that is hanged on the tree. And Jesus Christ was being hung for our sake. So for him to be on that cross, he was being caused for our sake. Hallelujah. So the cause that's supposed to be on our life, he carried it. The highest cause is the cause of the law. Jesus Christ decided to carry that cause on him. He decided to carry the cause on him. When he was being hung uh, on the tree, every cause of humanity Praise the Lord. Sister Evangelist to be, you said, um, Sir, come again. Anything such has. Please, can you repeat your question, please, so that I can understand you? I'm teaching about Jesus Christ was hung on the tree. He was made a cause for us. So if you have any question, you just ask me so that I can, um, I can continue. Hallelujah. So if you have every question, write it so that I can continue. Where I'm, I took my, my text is Galatians 3.13. Galatians 3.13. The Bible says in Galatians 3.13, I read, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. Christ was made a cause for us. For it is written, Cost is anyone that hangeth on the tree. So, what happened is this. When Jesus Christ was on the tree, or was on the cross, what is that that has been lifted up? Okay, let me come back. Listen carefully. Listen. I want you to open to John, please, for those who are watching us, I'm trying to follow, trying to answer her question. Let me come back again. I want you to open to John. John chapter 3. That is the first one. John chapter 3. And in the John chapter 3, look at verse 14. I read, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You know in the Old Testament, when the children of Israel sinned, snake was biting them, Moses asked God what he should do. God asked him to make a bruised snake and lift it up. Whosoever look at that snake will not die. It's in the Old Testament. Now, Jesus Christ quoted from the Old Testament. As Moses lifted up the serpent, so will the Son of Man be lifted up. That is what 14 is saying. So, now, I'm trying to explain to you that the serpent that was lifted up signified cause. Some people will say, why did God ask Moses to do a serpent, bronze serpent? God asked them to do bronze serpent because serpent was the only animal that was caused by God in Genesis. He allowed Satan to use him to tempt man, so he was caused. So Jesus was quoting from this scripture and said, if as the, as the serpent was lifted up, so he will be lifted up. 
No, I'm trying to explain to you that Jesus Christ was cursed for our sake. And I gave you another scripture to back it up so that you will know that Jesus Christ was cursed for our sake. I'm trying to explain to you the benefit of the cross. Just get the title, The Benefit of the Cross. What do we benefit from the cross of Jesus Christ? From the cross of Calvary? The first thing we benefited from is that Jesus Christ redeem us from the cause of the law. Why? Because he became a cause for us. For it is written, cause is anyone that is hung on the tree. So my, my, my statement here, one of the benefits of the cross, of the cross of Calvary, is that we are free from every cause of the law. Every cause of the law, we are free from it. The, the law is the highest, the cause of the law is the highest cause any man can place on you. Hallelujah. Please, if you understand it, let me know. If you don't understand it, I will come back again. So Jesus Christ, according to Galatians 3.13, he redeemed us from the cause of the law because he was made a cause for us. So the reason why Jesus Christ went to the cross is to deliver us from every kind of cause. Family cause, parental cause, cause of your community, whatsoever cause that is connect any kind of cause, Jesus Christ went to the cross to redeem you from that cross, to set you free. He became a cause for you. He was lifted up as a cause for you. According to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Did you understand it now? Hallelujah. Jesus was lifted up. Anybody that is being lifted up on the cross is already tagged cause. Praise the Lord. So I think, please, if you understand it, just tell me, yes, I do. Make me to know that you're online. If you understand what I'm teaching right now, because it's very important. What I'm trying to explain to you, the reason why Jesus Christ went to the cross is very, very important. The reason why Jesus went to the cross, Galatians 3.13, he became a cause for us. He redeemed us from the cause of the law. Hallelujah. So if you still have any question to ask, please, you are free to ask it right now so that I can go forward. Hallelujah, I'm waiting. Any question? God bless you all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, thank you. I can see some of you are right now online. God bless you. So the, 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 now, the issue is, I'm trying to explain to you the reason why Jesus went to the cross. He went to the cross, according to Galatians 3.13, to destroy, he became a cause so that you will be free from cause. He was a cause. Yes, Jesus Christ, look at Galatians 3 13, read it very well. He chose, he, he used him, he, he became a cause for us so that we shall be free from cause. Hallelujah. God bless you. So that is the re, one of the reasons why he went to the cross of Calvary for us. We are trying to explore the reason why Jesus Christ had to go to the cross, uh, cross of Calvary for us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So, I think you get it now. If you get it, let me understand you. Okay. This, the second reason which I want to show you now should be in um, Romans chapter 5, verse 10. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. Hallelujah. Open your Bible. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. 
the second reason why Jesus Christ went to the cross I read for you he says for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son we were reconciled God bless you to God through the death of his son look at it again the second reason why Jesus Christ went to the cross is to do what Romans 5 verse 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son much more having been reconciled we shall be saved by his life so the death on the cross of Calvary brought reconciliation back to God God is a just God note it God is a just God for mankind in the garden of Eden he mankind to eat the fruit he said you will die God became angry with mankind now Jesus Christ the only price to pay for mankind to be not to be an enemy to God is to die on the cross that is the second reason why sister Tessy Monday you are blessed that is the second reason why he chooses to go to the cross so that he could reconcile us back to God praise the Lord he could reconcile us back to God so if you are asked what are what is the second reason what are the reasons why Jesus went to the cross number one so that he could free us from every cause of the law do you know that before if you you can't keep the Ten Commandments it takes the grace of God the Bible says if you keep nine and fail one you are guilty of all but right now we live by his grace God is looking at us through the blood of Jesus Christ hallelujah the second reason why Jesus Christ went to the cross is to reconcile us before we were enemy to God we are enemy the day Adam ate the fruit that is the day man was separated from God but the day Jesus Christ died that is the day there was reconciliation Jesus had to die and shed his blood to wipe away our sin and for there to be reconciliation hallelujah praise the Lord amen that is the second reason why Jesus Christ died on the cross we are going to look at the third reason why Jesus Christ died Romans 8 verse 1 Romans 8 verse 1 The Bible said therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus The truth about it is this If you are not in Christ Jesus you are condemned Jesus Christ went to the cross so that you will not be condemned Humanity was condemned the day Adam sinned, that is the day Adam died. We are condemned. But Jesus Christ went to the cross to remove every condemnation, every tag on our life. You see, the third reason, to remove every condemnation upon our life. Hallelujah. Before when God is when when God is looking at us, He's looking at us as those that are condemned. But therefore now, now Jesus have died. There is no condemnation towards them that are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not condemned. You are never condemned. So the truth is this: Jesus Christ went to the cross to set you free from condemnation. There are different kinds of condemnation. But because you are in Christ Jesus, you are free from every kind of condemnation. 
Hallelujah. The fourth reason is God showing, showing love to sinners. Jesus went to the cross to show you that he loves you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whomsoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. His son came to die. God showed his love towards mankind. Jesus Christ showed his love towards mankind. The love of God towards mankind is to save us from wrath, is to save us from hell, is to save us from every condemnation. So whenever we are talking about the cross of Jesus Christ, many people do never know what transpired, the reason why Jesus had to die. Listen, if Jesus Christ did not die, we are, not, we are Gentiles. We are, we are, you know, our salvation could have been narrow. It could have been narrow. But we have somebody that paid the price for us. Somebody that died and says, you don't need to go to hell. I will go to hell for you once and for all. And if I come back, I will give you life. Jesus went, died. They took him to hell because he was tax sinner, but he conquered Satan. He defeated hell. He took the kill of hell, hell and death. He came back to life. He walked on this planet Earth for 40 days with the host of, 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 of the saints that died. He went back to heaven. It is a great victory. It is a great victory. If you are a child of God, you must be proud of your faith. No religious leader has died and came back to life and ascend to heaven. No religious leader. Check other religious books. Some of them believed that Jesus Christ truly came and he resurrected to the Father and is coming back again. So what am I trying to put across to you? When I'm talking about the death of Christ, God is demonstrating his love to you that he don't want you to go to hell. The Bible says the just for the unjust that he might bring us back to God. Can I quickly tell you, Jesus have the mindset, if he say I will not die, he have the mindset not to die. He, 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 he can decide not to die. But he says no. Instead for you to go to hell, instead for you to die, instead for Satan to be you know, afflicting you, let me take the whole affliction. Do you know the affliction he took? They, 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 they wiped him, they spit on him. When they were doing all those things, Jesus had you in mind. He says, let me take the shame. So that when you come to this world, you will not take the shame again. He paid the price. The price of sin. He paid it. What is the price of sin? Let me tell you what the price of sin signifies. He must share his blood. And his blood, he must present it before the Father. His blood must be holy. He didn't sin. If that Jesus Christ committed sin, he had he could, blood could have not been better, could have not been good to save mankind. But he did not sin. When he died, he was the lamb and he was the high priest himself. He died as the lamb of God. When he came back from the dead, the blood that was shed, he took it. He said, the ones to touch me, he said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father. He ascended to the father. Remember Jesus Christ, after he died, he went to hell. I explained it in my last video. He we went to Abraham Abosom to keep the man at the right hand. He promised him today, you shall be with me in paradise. When Jesus Christ died, he went to keep the man at Abraham Abosom and he went to hell, defeat Satan. He took the authority, the key from Satan. He went to the prison and preached to the spirits to tell them, what did he preach? Salvation has come to mankind. He preached to them. He released those ones, those ones that are in chains, those saints. There are some saints that Satan chained. He released them. Hallelujah. And when he came back, when, when he, he, was, he rose again on the third day, some of the saints came back with him. They saw them in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ, 
when he came back from the he resurrected from the dead he said he ought to go and meet the father first to give him the good news he went to the father and tell the father i have i have saved mankind this is my blood now he presented himself as the priest of god he you know time will not permit me to read hebrews maybe next time i'll read it for you he presented the blood to the father and let the father know he have paid the price that's supposed to be paid for mankind to be saved listen my dear brothers and sisters if that jesus did not die this earth could have been hell the earth could have been hell imagine satan ruling the earth listen jesus christ is the one in charge of this earth not satan satan is only controlling the system of the world jesus christ also has his own system in this world hallelujah jesus christ had his own system in this world i will the system of jesus is the church this is the reason why if you are a christian you must belong to the church because you are called out people called out assembly god wants to use you to fight the devil you are an ambassador of god hallelujah so let me go back to my teaching what am i trying to explain to you this night before you sleep is this when jesus christ died or went to the cross all the suffering he took he took them for your sake and for my sake the beating you could have received in hellfire they gave it to him the death you could have died he died for your place the spit you could have received they gave it to him they put a throne on his head blood was gushing out they perforated his hand and nailed him they nailed him and they nailed the leg jesus christ was bearing the pains why just to reconcile us back to god just to show us his love just for you not to go to hell I, i'm trying another reason so that you will not go to hell he went to hell for your place jesus christ went to hell for your place and now he came back and defeated satan he says don't go to hell accept me when you accept me as the lord and personal savior i will take you to heaven i am the way i am the truth i am the life jesus christ went on the cross so that you can't be sick the bible says, by the stripes of jesus you are made whole sickness is illegal there are things you permit that jesus christ have paid for if you are sick know it that you don't know the reason why jesus went to the cross then you ought to stand on your authority and say sickness leave my body no matter the kind of sickness that is why the bible said the name of jesus has been lifted high above every other name in heavens and on earth no matter the name of the sickness they must bow jesus christ went to the cross when they were nailing him he knows that you will come to this earth instead for you to pass through the, the judgment let him go it through for your sake every sin you will ever commit has been forgiven if you can accept jesus every sin you ever committed has been forgiven that is the reason why he went to the cross you see no matter even though you have shed blood the bible said the blood of jesus speaks better things than the blood of abel you remember the blood of abel was crying from the ground for vengeance any time you shed blood either through abortion or any means that blood speaks but when you accept jesus christ what happened you accept him as your lord and your savior what happened the blood of jesus will begin to speak on your life do you know what the bible says if any man be in christ he is a new creation 
Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. What happened is that you never had yesterday. Your spirit, your, 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 your history. God began to count your history from the day you were born again. You, you never had history. You were you once killed, but God in God's register, you never killed. If you can say, Lord, I recognize your death on the cross. That is the reason why you are a child of God. Many people don't understand the death of Christ. What, what it took Jesus to go on the cross. Do you know it took him shame? Even the people he healed, they were watching him. Even his own mother was watching him. His own disciples was watching him. In fact, one of them says, if you say you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Save yourself. They were mocking him. They spitted on him. They, they flogged him. The Bible said in Isaiah, you cannot even recognize him. He's a man of sorrow, a man of grief. When you see Jesus, you can't recognize his face because all over him is blood. Those, the blood that, they, that got out of him was what saved you. God picked those blood. The Holy Spirit picked those blood, one after the other, and presented it to the Father. Why did he die? Because of the error of Adam and Eve, he was trying to correct it. And he has corrected it. Now, let me teach you something you never know before. Listen, open your ears very well. Adam was made from the ground. Jesus Christ came from the Father. We came from the lineage of Adam. Now, there is what we call DNA. If your mother gave birth to you, you have the DNA of your mother. Adam's DNA has been contaminated with sin. There is no how you keep a child, a newborn baby. The ba newborn baby will not commit sin. You will see them, they will, they, you don't need to teach them how to sin. Now, sin has become human nature because it is in the DNA of Adam. But I have a good news for you. Jesus Christ came from heaven. And he said, when you accept him, you are switching over from Adam DNA to Jesus DNA. And Jesus DNA is life, is peace, is holiness. You don't struggle to live a holy life if you are a child of God. Yes, the Holy Spirit will help you. You don't struggle. So if you are a born again child of God, you are now, you are now translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You are now switching over from Adam DNA that, con that is, have contaminated death, contaminated sickness, contaminated suffering to the DNA of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you the truth. So what the death of Christ gave us victory. The Bible says he made an open spectacle of devil, triumphing over them in it. He, he defeated Satan for your sake. I'm telling you the reality. Hallelujah. So these are not a, just the areas I want to touch, but time we permit, if time, there is time, give me a few minutes of your time. Let me just touch one or two issues that I didn't touch before now. You see, now I'm trying to tell you the benefits, benefit of his death. Do you know what the Bible says? Let me tell you what the Bible says. It says, for Jesus was rich, but for our sake, he became poor, so that through his poverty, we might be rich. Jesus was rich. He became poor. So that through his poverty, we might be rich. You see what the Bible says? Through his poverty, we might be rich. Hallelujah. So, Jesus Christ died to give you life. Another benefit of his death. Let me explain. There are a lot of benefits. I cannot say all now. You know, the mission statement of Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 10, 
Satan come to steal, to kill, to destroy. But I've come to give you life. And to give you what? Life more abundantly. What does that mean? Listen. The life Jesus Christ came to give you is internal life. Is the life you receive when you are born again. You will be free to talk to the Father. Have you ever kneeled down and Satan tells you, stand up, you are a sinner, and you will not know what to say? Okay, have you ever, you want to pray and Satan showed you a particular sin you committed, and you, you cannot even pray? That is to that is the spirit of guilt. But have you ever come to the throne of God? You are happy. You are free to talk to the Father. There is an access between you and the Father. Do you know what it means to talk to the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth? If somebody say you are, are you a child of God? And you say yes, think of what it means to be a child of God. I'm not saying a child of Bill Gates. A child of Bill Gates, that, that is too far small what I'm trying to say. A child of the president. No. I'm saying a child of the most high God. It is glorious. You need to be proud to be a Christian. Jesus gave you life through his blood. I have come to give thee life and to give you more abundantly. You need to receive the life that passed through understanding. The life of God. See, when you are born again, you have a nature of God in you. You don't struggle not to lie. Although Paul said, I die daily, there are things that will begin to stop in your life gradually. But when, you, that, when that nature takes over you, you will see lie as lie. You will see evil as evil. Amen. So I will pause here the benefits of Christ. You have, I've given you more of them. One is healing. By the stripe of Jesus, you are healed. Two is prosperity. You are born to prosper. Salvation is a full package. Salvation comes with healing, deliverance. Anything you can think of, prosperity is a full package. So the day you are born again, you have access to the Father and to everything He have. Hallelujah. Now, the area I want to quickly touch before I round up, is the area of, uh, 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 you know, Jesus Christ. Please, okay, for now, is there anybody, uh, do you understand this one right now? If you do, please just write me yes, that you understand what I'm teaching, so that I can move on to the next one. It's very important. I don't want to, uh, uh, if you understand it, just write yes, please. Just write yes, you, you do, just write yes, if you understand it. Hallelujah. Can I get one or two yes or no? If you know you understand it, write yes so that I can move forward to the next one. It's very important because I don't want to teach and I'll be talking alone. So it's good that you, you agree with me. You write yes, you understand it. Okay, God bless you. God bless you. If you understand what I've been teaching, write yes. If you do not understand it, write no, please, so that I can, uh, I can uh, come back again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Okay, I think I have two people or three people that have, that says yes. So let me continue to so that I can summarize everything. Sister Gift, yes. Okay, Evangelist Mabel, yes. God bless you. God bless you. Now. Let me try to summarize everything. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, his mission on the cross of Calvary, there, are a, there is a word he said, the last statement he made was, it is finished. Jesus Christ was about 33 years old, or 33 and a half when he died. His mission was around three years interval. His mission on earth. 
and he fulfilled the mission. On the cross of Calvary, there are some statements he made, which I am about to explain to you, maybe in late next section in details. But let me use the last one he made. He said, it is finished. What is finished? Suffering of mankind is finished. Death of mankind is finished. Enemy with mankind. God angry with mankind is finished. The mission and the purpose he had on earth is finished. God have now started a new relationship with man. That word, it is finished, is very deep. Can I quickly tell you, as a child of God, sickness is supposed to finish in your life. It's not supposed to continue. Affliction is supposed to end. Jesus said, it is finished. It's supposed to end. You have paid the price. As a child of God, there are benefits you need to be... I mean, if you work for a company, the company is supposed to give you benefits. How much more you are serving God? There is a benefit. Your father has given you benefits. Explore them. Praise the Lord. Um... Any question? If you have a question, please let me know. I need questions. The only few people I'm seeing online uh, that are responding to me, other ones, it's like they're sleeping or they are just watching, they don't talk. Please, if you have questions, let me get the question now before I make I might run up my message for today because um, the what I am about to enter into now, you. It will take a long time to finish it. So we are already off. I've checked the time. The time is already gone. So we run up this message now. Tomorrow, I will continue in details. Because I want us to uh, learn it gradually. Any question? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Hallelujah. If there is any question, please write it down. Let me answer it. Pertaining to this subject we are dis we discussed, if possible. If there is any question, if there is no question, then let me know that there is no question. Hallelujah. Do you know the reason why Jesus Christ is the only one that knows your future? I, I don't know whether we can be able to finish this, but let's leave it till next um, tomorrow. I will see come up tomorrow. So I want to thank every one of you that have, have been here. There are a lot of things I want to teach you now, but the time cannot permit me. I have to pray along with you now. Amen. So I want you to Bless God. Begin to thank God for your life. Appreciate Him for what He has been doing for you. Thank Him for grace and for mercy. Thank Him for the blood of Jesus that has been speaking upon your life. Thank Him right now for His grace upon you. Just appreciate Him. Say, Lord, I love you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sake. No other man can do that. Your mother can't die for you. Your father can't die for you. But Jesus, he knew you would be coming to this world. He died. Say, Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you tonight. We thank you. We bless you, Jesus. You became a cause for us. Just for us to be free from the cause. You were poor for our sake. Just for us to be rich. Thank you, Jesus. We were enemies with God. But your death brought peace and unity thank you father we give you the glory and the praise 
in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want you to pray tonight. Ask God to use you as an instrument. The problem we are having in Christendom, people always pray, Father, give me. No one ever say, Father, what will I give you? Say, Father, use me in this generation. Let all the spiritual gifts start to operate in my life. Let the gift be, be activated. Ask God to use you in your ministry. Ask God to use you. Just pray that prayer is important. Pray that prayer is important. Pray right now. Say, Lord, use me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, use me. Use me, Lord. Raka Pashata. Luprata Maleke Prosokoto. Thank you, Lord. Le Kabayama Handolupo Sataya. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. You are going to pray another prayer that you will not experience sorrow this year. You will not experience shame this year. Your family will not experience shame and sorrow. Pray that prayer as we take this song. The blood of Jesus set me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus set me free. I say the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus set me free. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus set me free. I pray for you this hour that let the blood of Jesus set you free from every judgment, every condemnation. Let the blood of Jesus liberate you from every satanic power. You are free this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the blood of Jesus will speak upon your life. The blood will set you free. The blood will lose you. The blood will fight your battle. The blood will change your story. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. We are going to pray that any evil your parents have committed, the judgment will not be on your life. Please pray this prayer. Any evil my parents has committed, the judgment shall not be on my life. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Any evil my mother, my father, they committed, the judgment shall not be upon my life. By the authority, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are free from parental judgment judgment. Any judgment the one that is fighting you is nullified. That judgment will not be on your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to pray another prayer. That this year, all your plans will be established. The Bible says, I have not called the sons of Jacob to serve me in vain. This is our year of grace, greatness and glory. Say, God, give me a testimony this year. Pray in the name of Jesus. I pray that God shall give you a testimony this year. Whatsoever you are believing God for, I prophesy there shall be a testimony in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. There shall be a testimony in your destiny. There shall be a testimony receive a testimony every delayed miracle is released the Lord that I will serve will surprise you this month that we, have, we are entering today I decree this month it shall be well with you this month that you have entered now this month God will use it to promote you every area you believe God for blessing for favor let the grace of God be upon you right now. Receive grace. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are going to stand against any way they gathered against you. Open your mouth and declare fire. Let fire consume them. Let fire consume them. Wherever they have gathered, let fire consume them. Pray right now for yourself. 
in the name of Jesus, anywhere they have gathered against your life, against your destiny, let fire of God, fire of God, let fire consume them. In the name of Jesus, wherever they are gathered, let they be scattered. Let they be scattered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You are going to pray. Say, I receive all the benefits of the cross in Jesus' name. I receive, receive all the benefits of the cross in Jesus' name. The benefit of prosperity. The benefit of healing. I receive them right now. Claim it. Open your mouth and claim it. In the name of Jesus Christ, all the benefits of the cross, I receive them right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for Destiny Helper. You need somebody to help you in life. It can be a woman. It can be a man. Jesus Christ had Mary and Martha. He had the disciples as helpers. Say, my God, send my helper to me. Let him begin to function 100% in my life. My God, send my helper to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, shall we pray that prayer? My Father and my God, send my helper wherever they are. Lord, send it, O God. I pray for these ones that are agreeing with me that they will find helper. They will find people that will lift them up. You will not dash your foot against the stone. Kings and queens will serve you. May you find your helpers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will find help. When you turn the right, you will see help. As you turn the left, you will see help in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to pray along with you. I don't know what is delaying in your life. You have asked for something, but it is being delayed. I come to agree with you. There shall not be any delay anymore in your life. I decree and I prophesy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there shall not be delay in your case. There shall not be delay in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Lastly, I want you to pray one prayer. My head shall not carry evil news. My head will not be cut off. I will live to declare the goodness of God this year. Prophesy upon your life. My head will not carry good, evil news. In the name of Jesus, any evil news, we reject it. Open your mouth and reject every evil news. Oh God and my Father, Lekenderi mama labo seke maya, Lubra de masun tari mama yende, Lokoto komoro koto dikata, My Lord and my Father, Yakata la pasataya, Lupra katara pasanta, This one head will not carry evil news. In the name of Jesus, Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. I bless you this hour in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You that have waited upon the Lord, the Bible says you shall renew your strength. Receive grace right now. Renew your strength. Overtake those that are overtaking you. I pray and I bless you. I decree and I declare you will not fail. Wherever you have gone, they reject you. You shall be accepted today. This new month, I usher you into greatness. I usher you into favor. I usher you into prosperity. I bless you. I pray for the grace of God upon your life. I pray for the blessing of God upon your life. I pray for the favor of God upon your life. You are blessed. You are favored. In Jesus' name I pray. I agree with you tonight that the Spirit of God will help you. The Spirit of God will elevate you. Wherever you fall, the hand of God will pick you up. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you. Whatsoever you lay your hands shall prosper. The favor of God is upon you. You shall be blessed in your field. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
I bless you for the life of this one. Be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Sister Doris, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Doris. You can see you are taking the Bible school very serious. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Later, I would like to speak with you. Amen. Evangelist on the line, God bless you. God bless you. Sister Gift, God bless you. Sister Gift, God bless you. Hallelujah. These ones I'm calling are the ones that are online right now. I appreciate every one of you that have been sharing this video. Please, you can still go back to read again. Read, do, pray along with me, listen to the tape again and again. Hallelujah. God bless you, every one of you that has been online. I appreciate you. May God bless you all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. God bless you all. I appreciate God for what he's doing in your life. Thank you for being online with me. Sorry, I've not been online for some time. I traveled, but I'm back now. Amen. So let's believe God will start up our prayers again from 9 o'clock. Please be around. Never you miss our Bible school. If you know you are part of this Bible school, you must call me to tell me you are part of it. So that at the end, I will give you a certificate. It's important. If you want to be part of it, inbox me. Just tell me, Pastor, I'm part of it. I want to join the studies. You just take only two things. You will write your notes and you will always be punctual. Whenever I start the Bible school, it is free of charge. God will bless you as you inbox me to tell me you want to be part of it. Thank you very much. May God bless you. God bless every one of you. In Jesus' name. Uh, there is no question today. I don't know why. I don't know why there's no question today. Because sister, one sister gift always asks me questions. She's not, I don't know whether she's around today. I don't know whether she's around. Please, get questions you ask me so that we can dig deep in the word of God. God be with you. See you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Remember to share the video. My name remains Pastor S.O. Divine. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.